The battlefield is changing. Ground troops with robots, navies without crews, and skies ruled by swarms of drones. Unmanned systems are the new game changer of war. This unmanned system is divided into two types, one that teams with manned platforms and another that operates fully autonomously with only unmanned units. Lately, the term MUM-T, short for manned unmanned teaming, can be heard even more often. Today, we'll see why unmanned systems are called game changers and meet the technologies shaping modern warfare. First, why are unmanned systems on the rise? One reason is low birth rates. By 2045, Korea's pool of conscripts will shrink by 60% compared to 2020. To grasp how serious that is, operating a single KDDX, Korea's Navy's next-gen warship in development, still requires at least 100 crew members. But the Korean Navy already lacks manpower, and plans by 2030 to cut crew ratios or move to all officer ships. So how many 100 crew warships can really be deployed? It's not only happening in Korea. Since the 1960s, global fertility rates have halved in 50 years. This demographic cliff isn't a worry. It's a guaranteed future and a worldwide crisis. That's why the battlefield of tomorrow must use manpower efficiently. Unmanned teaming has become the only real choice. But what about going fully unmanned? Even with advanced tech, ethics require humans to make the final call in combat. And after victory, enforcing control still needs people. So, land, sea, and air are now filling with unmanned systems at speed. Hold on, before we go further, today's video is key. Instead of watching four or five clips, we'll give it all to you in one. So stick with us to the end. First, the ground. From remote-controlled combat vehicles to four-legged robot dogs, nations are moving beyond trials and into real battlefield use. These unusual robot dogs have already been deployed, taking on missions like mine detection and reconnaissance. The US even tested one in the Middle East, firing rifles and shooting down drones. In China, robot wolves were spotted moving in packs to carry out missions. Combat vehicles are in play too known as UGVs, unmanned ground vehicles, and among them, the Themis stands out. Now in service in 16 countries, it has proven so effective that enemy forces have placed bounties on it. Unmanned ground vehicles, Korea has them too. Hanwha Aerospace's UGV Aryan Smet, a multi-purpose unmanned vehicle that passed the US Army's top-tier performance tests. It handles supply runs, surveillance, search, and even fire support, delivering autonomous firepower on demand. Picture a city turned into a battlefield. Debris, fallen trees, and concrete blocking every path. Arian Smet scans with cameras and LiDAR finding the safest route through the chaos. It goes even further. Equipped with a gunfire detection system, it can identify the location of enemy shooters on its own. It analyzes sound waves and signatures to tell friend from foe, even when gunfire erupts from all directions. With AI and network comms, it stays connected in combat. And if lines go down, it can launch a drone to keep relays alive. What can't it do? After clearing US Army trials, Hanwha is now building the next version, equipped with a hybrid power pack, refined with direct US feedback. Next up is the best seller of K-Defense, the K-9 Howitzer, now evolving for unmanned warfare. Its future model, the K-9A3, is under development. A single crew member will operate one gun, while an armored K-11 command vehicle can control three or more unmanned K-9s. Depending on the situation, a small team could run an entire artillery battalion. The first place unmanned tech took the stage, the skies above. Once drones proved their power in combat, nations everywhere rushed to build air fleets. By 2040, the global UAV market is set to hit 50 trillion won. The US has used drones for over 30 years, from the giant global Hawk to the MQ-9 Reaper, known as the Angel of Death, its lineup is as formidable as the country itself. Last year, the US even staged the world's first dogfight between a manned jet and an AI-piloted jet. The winner was kept secret, but AI showed it could match human-level maneuvering. Looking ahead, the US plans to field collaborative combat aircraft, 
teaming with fighters within five years and expanding to as many as 2,000 by the mid-2030s. Israel, a longtime drone power, excels in precision strikes. China, leader in civilian drones, is expanding military use with low-cost mass production. And Turkey has surged as a new drone powerhouse. Its TB2 proved itself in multiple wars, capable of reconnaissance and precision strikes while staying affordable. It has become a flagship export for Turkey's defense industry. As countries around the world race to secure unmanned power in the skies, Korea is also accelerating development by operating a wide range of UAVs. Korea's current UAV technology is estimated to be about 83% of the US, a level considered quite advanced. At the heart of drone technology stands one key system, the ASA radar. It detects and tracks targets in the air, on land, and at sea while handling multiple missions at once. Hanwha Systems is a leader in this field. It's the only Korean company to develop an ASA radar for the KF-21 fighter and prove its performance under Agency for Defense Development. Building on that, Hanwha is now developing an ASA radar for unmanned wingmen, optimized for MUM-T operations. It's smaller, lighter, and uses an air-cooling design, dissipating heat without heavy equipment. As ASA radar is called the eyes of an aircraft, its role in unmanned operations, where no human sits aboard, is absolutely vital. When we think of unmanned battlefields, the first image is usually drones. From spiderweb raids with hundreds of drones striking air bases to small drones disabling billion-dollar bombers, new examples appear almost every day. The main defense has been jamming, cutting the link between pilot and drone. But now, fiber optic drones have arrived, connected by cable so they can't be jammed. And in response, scissor drones appear, built to snip those very cables. Like spear and shield, drones fight drones, which are then hunted by more drones, an endless drone war. As drones rise as rulers of the battlefield, attention is turning to defense, anti-drone technology. Anti-drone systems are technologies that neutralize illegal or hostile drones. Hanwha Systems is now developing platforms that can detect, track, and respond in advance. Korea, with its dense population and small territory, is especially vulnerable in key areas like the Seoul capital region. To counter this, Hanwha Systems and the DAPA are building integrated counter-drone solutions for critical infrastructure and a multi-layered mobile counter-drone system. These protect vital facilities like air bases and urban centers. The multi-layered mobile counter-drone system is vehicle-mounted and mobile, ideal for defending cities and high-value sites. It offers 360-degree detection and tailors its response by range. When they get close, a laser takes them down. Reassuring, isn't it? And finally, the sea. If the skies have drones, the oceans have unmanned surface vessels, also called sea drones. One even made headlines recently for taking down a fighter jet worth hundreds of millions. Experts predict that within the next decade, the global USV market will more than double. Unmanned submarines, too, are growing at 13.5% a year, driving explosive growth in the entire naval unmanned sector. USVs are a core force of the future Navy, taking on surveillance, reconnaissance, combat, and mine operations. Combat types can fight up close with autonomous navigation, remote control, and AI-driven target ID and weapon assignment. In May, Hanwha Systems unveiled its combat USV for the first time at the International Maritime Defense Industry Exhibition. Combat USVs carry more sensors and weapons than scouts. CMS, the combat management system, commands and controls them all, the core of USV technology. Hanwha Systems built this CMS in-house and already exports it abroad. Proven in countless sea trials, it now powers nearly every ship in Korea's navy. Hanwha Ocean's Combat Unmanned Underwater Vehicle is also worth noting. It's a crewless sub that can launch torpedoes and lay mines. Imagine a submarine with no one on board, no rest, no meals, just silent, sustained operations across the open sea. Hanwha Ocean unveiled a manned unmanned teaming carrier, Ghost Commander 2 built to link assets and run high-speed multi-dimensional operations. By linking unmanned air and sea power, it strengthens missions from surveillance to air, ship, and sub-defense. 
Its loadout is versatile. Manned and unmanned aircraft, armored vehicles, tanks, even trucks. All land, sea, and air forces unite on this single vessel. Impressive, isn't it? Across air, land, and sea. As we've seen, unmanned systems are rewriting every domain on the battlefield. Hanwha is bringing together the strength of its three defense companies to create a MUM-T solution that unites land, sea, and air. Through a network linking low Earth orbit satellites and ground systems, battlefield views from space can be shared across platforms to drive efficient, coordinated operations. The real key is the network, the nervous system of the battlefield, linking weapons, unmanned tech, and formations. Hanwha also leads the way in Korea when it comes to defense network technology. And here too, Hanwha leads in Korea. Hanwha Systems is developing a low Earth orbit satellite-based communication system that ties together ground, air, and naval tactical networks and has already staged Korea's first successful test of inter-satellite link. So, Hanwha is moving beyond single products to connect the entire battle space, designing the whole board. The moment when people and machines fight side by side, and land, sea, air, and space unite as one battlefield. Hanwha is shaping a future where progress becomes humanity's shield, and that future is already beginning now. With the hope that advanced defense technology will stand as a pillar of peace for humanity, we'll end today's video here.